How you doing? Craig from Help Incorporated here for another instructional video on a CBC GANS analog unit for archiving video. First thing you want to do when you're on the main screen here, uh, when you come down to the bottom here, you have your search and archiving features. Easiest method I find to do it is to use the search method to find the actual footage that you want to archive. I can then go back to any date and time of when I want to archive footage. Say if I want to go on to the uh, the 21st, I have just a can't one camera hooked up here, so I can click on playback. It brings up my one camera. I can then fast forward or rewind to a different point in time. So if I hit rewind, I can each time I click the rewind button, it goes back faster and faster. If I find that this is my starting point of when I want to archive the video, I can now hit the little disc button puts a little arrow there, brings up this information here. I can select if I want one camera or all cameras. Uh, I can check or uncheck whatever cameras I do or don't want. I would double click on the tagline here. I need to call it something. Uh, so for my purposes, uh, we'll just call it one, two, three, four. So now I'm going to start from this point for archiving. I can then fast forward, oops, I can fast forward to a different point in time. That was the end of my video there, just because that's all I had recorded. So I would then hit the disk button again. So now, now it tells me from on um, this date, 1119 to 1121. That's a long time frame. Uh, normally, you wouldn't have that kind of time frame. Um, So for archiving the video, you're going to hit the search. For archiving the video, you're going to hit the search function. It'll bring up a calendar to show you your dates and times of when you have available footage. Uh, you can click on different days uh, around here, which would show you all the different footage that you have. Um, on the 19th, I had just one camera hooked up to it, so I'm going to use that, that footage here. Uh, so at 7 a.m., I can now hit play, and it'll play back that one camera that I have. And it brings me up the transport controls, uh, so I can then um, either fast forward through the video to a different point. Each time I hit it, it, it goes up to a faster speed uh, for, ar for archiving. Um, I can also hit rewind if I want to. And again, I can fast forward or rewind to a faster speed. Once I find an area of when I want to start the recording uh, for the archiving footage at, I would hit the disk button. I can then select how many cameras I want to archive off. I would have to call it something. Uh, so for my purposes, I'm just going to call it one, two, three, four. You can call it whatever you want to to help identify it for you uh, for giving to the police. Uh, you would then hit the start button, hit play, and now it's going to go through. I can fast forward to a point I want to end the footage at. So I can then hit pause if I want to. I can hit the disk button again. So now it tells me on uh, 11 19 2014 from 7 11 to 9 a.m. is what I'm going to actually archive the footage for. It tells me how large the file size is. Of course, the more cameras that you have and the more information you have, I only had one camera, so there's really not much information on there. I was just pointing at the ceiling here. Uh, it's a sm very small file, 6.3 megabytes. But if you had multiple cameras going at once, this file size can get pretty large, so sometimes you may have to do it in smaller increments. 15, 20 minute increments, uh, whatever it may be, because uh, you want to keep that file size under a certain amount depending on what you're archiving out to. If it's a USB thumb drive, it could be up to 4 or 16 gigabits of information. Uh, if it's a CD or DVD, you either on a CD you have 600 or 700 uh, megabytes of information you can archive off to, or on a DVD you can do up to 4.7 gigs. Uh, so it just depends on what the arch archiving media is, is going to be, uh, is going to determine what you need to. Uh, keep the size uh, at. Uh, if you are done with the archive feature, you can either hit continue to, if it's not the area that you want, you want to record more footage, you could hit continue and you could then go through that process again. Or if you hit stop, the reserve button is going to light up. So now you can reserve that footage. So if I hit reserve, it tells me now that it's been reserved. I can now close this out, close this out, close this out, and now I can go to the archiving feature to actually put that footage out onto a disc or onto a uh, um, 
USB thumb drive. So I go to the reserve data management area. Um, so I have my some other clips in here, but I want to find my clip here, one, two, three, four, that I archived off. Um, if I want any information about the clip, I can see it here. Uh, I can delete the clip out of that area, or I can burn the footage off. If I click burn, I have my choice of either going off to a CD uh, DVD, and in a moment, when I plug my thumb drive in, it's a good idea to have that thumb drive plugged in ahead of time. Let me just close this out. If I now hit burn, now I will have a choice. My cruiser uh, thumb drive, I can burn it off to that. The tag name is going to be 1234, what I originally tagged it for. And now if I hit start, it's going to come out and go to through the burning process to burn off that footage. It's now writing that information to the drive itself. When it gets to 100%, it'll tell me that the burning was successful. I hit OK. And I can close that out. The other method that you could use for archiving footage would, would be to actually archive directly to the drive without having to go through the search feature. If you knew exactly the dates and times that you wanted to be able to record the footage off to, you can actually do it directly from the archiving screen. So if I move the timeline here, I can adjust the time everywhere I click. I can, I can adjust back or forward the time I want to do. You still have to call it something, so we'll call it uh, XYZ. Uh, again, you would select what you want to burn it off to. You can query that result uh, to see how much uh, uh, file size that is right now. Move my timeline into the area of areas that I want to uh, archive off to. If I want to do this, say for an hour, uh, I want to change that date to the 17th. Uh, I can query that result. So now it tells me I have 695.2 megabytes of information and now I can actually burn that directly from here so I didn't have to go into the search frame. If you hit start again it would go through and burn that footage off as long as you had room on your thumb drive or on your CD drive, whatever you were trying to burn, burn it off to. Um, but those are the two areas of uh, how, to, how to archive footage uh, either using the archive feature directly or which I like using the search method uh, so you can exactly see what video you're, you're going to be searching and reserving uh, for later uh, archiving. That's it.